Hiya. Today I'm going to take you through a test of what's commonly called the primary palette. Three colours. Yellow, red and blue plus white. Um, because a lot of people do believe that you can mix any colour that you need in painting with these three colours. Now I'm talking about opaque media here so this would be relevant for oil and acrylic painters. But the way I'm going to test this is I'm going to see what range of colours we can mix with those paints. And I'm going to do it by comparing them to the highest chroma colours to see how high chroma I can get against the Monsell book. Now the Monsell book is kind of like, it's best thought of as a map of colour really. So um, this shows you the highest chroma that it's possible to get in paint um, at this hue, which is a kind of an orange red, about a mid red. Okay, so I'll be testing that one. Here's another one. In Monsell terms, this hue is called 5YR, YR standing for yellow red. This is the highest chroma that you can get in paint um, in this hue. And it happens at about this value, about in the middle of the value range. So I'm going to see if we can get that high chroma. Now some areas of hue are going to be pretty tricky to get to. Some will be easier than others, but we'll find out once and for all by actually mixing them on the palette. So let's see. On the palette here, I've got, let me just quickly explain, I've got titanium white here. These are all oil paints. And I've got cadmium yellow here. Um, this is a Michael Harding cadmium yellow. Um, this is pyrrole rubine, which is a slightly bluish red. Uh, this is from Geneva Paints. This is quinacridone rose from Michael Harding as well. And the reason I've got both of these on there is because this one is slightly more purple than this one. This is slightly higher chroma, but <clears throat> the red is more problematic in the primary palette. Um, if you try and do it with a cad red, you probably won't get very far, particularly on the purple side of things. And then I've got ultramarine blue as a fairly representative blue. And I'm going to see what range of colours I can mix with these. But before I do, a quick point about when people talk about palettes. Um, and I was doing it just then. I was talking about cadmium yellow here, for instance. And you might read somewhere online that cadmium yellow is a good yellow to use for a primary palette, but look at this. This here is Michael Harding's cadmium yellow. This is Winsor & Newton cadmium yellow. And hopefully you can see the big difference in the hues of these two colours. They're both about the same value. This one is lighter than this one. They're about the same chroma, but this one is much more orange than this one. So if you're using it in a mix, it's going to behave very differently. So <clears throat> this is one of the reasons why I think Monsell is so useful, because instead of being dependent on particular tube paint names, which after all can mean very different things to different people and different manufacturers, depending on which one you have, um, you just deal with the actual colours that you're trying to mix. Let's get straight on with it. I'm going to start with having a go at a middle red, okay? Because we've got bluish reds here. So let's just see if we can get anywhere near to any of these higher chroma reds and see what we can achieve. I'll leave this Winder & Newton cadmium yellow on there just to see. We can have a little play with that as well, possibly. But let's have a try first with this. This is a pyrrole rubine. It's a good replacement for alizarin because alizarin, as you probably know, is not light fast, is not safe to use in paintings because it will gradually change hue over time. So not a particularly good idea to use that. Um, Pyrrole rubine is a, a pretty light fast, fairly good substitute. So let's see, let's try and see if we can get to this one. Now the value of this, if I put a little dab of that on this chip, the value is quite a bit lower. But the hue is also more towards blue, so I can raise the value and swing the hue round towards what you might call more of a, a middle red by putting in some cadmium yellow.
you can see hopefully this is this area of what they call the primary palette you can do reasonably well with you can mix fairly high chroma I've gone a bit too far then and swung over into orange you can mix fairly high chroma reds and oranges using these paints so this area of the color space if you like the reds you can do reasonably well with. Let's see what I've got there compared to this chip here. It's slightly lower value still. It's quite a lot lower chroma. It's probably closer to around this chroma. The value is somewhere between these two, so I'm probably around there or around there. The reason I'm doing this this way is it gives you a really good visual comparison of where I can actually get just by mixing these colors together. It's a little bit lighter than that one. Hopefully you can see in value terms, it's going to be lower value than this one, somewhere in between the two. Now I could add more of this yellow now, this cadmium yellow, but I would swing the hue too far towards orange. So <clears throat> in Munsell terms, although we can get right up here, and you can get up there with some good quality paint, um, we're about here in the chroma range. So in terms of trying to get a reasonable middle red, we've got to about here. Now this is chroma 12, red can go up to 16, but it's not too bad. So let's have a look at the orange area of the hue space now. Um, now, as I was saying before, this is, um, in Munsell terms, this is 5YR. Uh, so this is about a middle orange. Now, these colors here are really important to a realist painter because flesh color is in here, and off wood is in here, an awful lot of things in the world around us are one of these colors here. Most of them, to be fair, uh, around this chroma level or below, but let's just see how high we can get trying to mix a high chroma orange. Not as high chroma as the red, remember, this is a chroma 14 in Monsell. Let's just see how close we can get to this. I'm going to pick up some of this again, small amount. Of this pyrrole rubine and I'll do another one at the same time with quinacridone rose. Cadmium yellow. More red orange. Now obviously by doing it this way I'm just picking particular points around the hue circle. I can't mix them all in the time I have and this still be useful to you, but it should be by the time we're done a fairly representative test of how close you can get. And this is, look, this is coming out pretty good. This is fairly high chroma. We've got a high chroma red and we've got a high chroma yellow, which is giving us a fairly high chroma color here. If I used the Winsor & Newton cadmium yellow, which is more orange, I would probably be able to get slightly higher still. Let's put a little on here and see where we've come. The value is a little low and the chroma is low. We'll bring the value up, which will swing the hue slightly, but we'll still be in the general area. And after all, this is a general test of what you can reach with these tube colors. We're about the right value range there. The hue is about the same. Let me just wipe this off and put a new dab on so it's a bit clearer. The chroma is not there, but it's not far off. I'd say we're probably maybe one step down in chroma.
Yeah, we're about there, slightly higher chroma. So for the orange, we managed to get up to here, and the highest you could reasonably expect to get is up to 14. So we're at chroma 12, and you could get chroma 14 if you had some stronger paints. I actually have a permanent orange from Michael Harding, which gets a little bit above 14. But what's interesting about this, I mean, that means that you can pretty much guarantee that you can hit all of these colours back here with enough mixing. It's going to take some time to make sure you don't swing the hues too much if you wanted to keep it your same hue. But if you can hit this, then you can hit most of these at this value range. You can probably hit most of those two. You might struggle with that, but you can probably hit most of those two. The higher value range ones here. Um, I'm going to test the lower value in a minute because that will be different. But we've managed to get up to here and that's okay. It's a pretty good performance. And for most things you would be fine. If you were painting an orange in normal indoor light, or a clementine, say, which is even higher chroma, you would not be able to match the chroma of the light side of the piece of fruit. I can tell you this from experience because I painted quite a few. Um, and when an object is sitting in ordinary indoor light, <coughs> the light plane will tend to be higher chroma than the local. So a clementine or an orange is going to be in t the local colour is going to be, in terms of chroma, already at the upper reaches of what you can do. So you want to push the chroma a little bit higher, so that would mean you would have to compromise. So you've lost a couple of steps in chroma. Let me just check and see what you could get using the quinacridone rose. I'm guessing we'll probably get somewhere similar. What's interesting about this pigment, I think, is that although it seems a slightly lower chroma on the palette, in mixes I think it performs slightly better than the pyrrole rubin in terms of chroma. Um, the orange I'm getting here is very slightly, there's not much in it, but it's very slightly higher chroma than the one that I got with the pyrrole rubin. Hopefully you can see that with them side by side there. They both performed pretty much the same. So let's have a look now and see if we can hit anything down around here. Now, <clears throat> a lot of the things that you find that you're going to paint will be down here. You, I mean, this is down here at value 2, slightly lower than a value 2, at about this chroma, is burnt umber. Um, and there's a reason uh, that you see so much burnt umber used in paintings, because a lot of stuff in the natural world is down here in this value range. It's a really... Uh, important colour to be able to hit. So I need to see if I can make a brown. Now I'm going to be pretty limited here because I've got to hit this value, a value 2. Now let's get this out and see what we can do. Now the value of my reds is already higher than the value of this brown, right? Not by much, but they're a little bit higher value. This one is kind of... <clears throat> this paint has medium mixed already in it, which makes it very thin, uh, which is slightly more difficult to test with. I'm not criticising that necessarily. It's outside the remit of this video, but it does make it more difficult to test. But these are slightly... Hopefully you can see these colours here are slightly higher value than this. So I have to bring the value down. The only way I can do that is with something darker than these, and the only thing I have that is darker is ultramarine blue, okay? So I have to bring it down with that. Let's start with the quinacridone rose, and I'll match, I'll match the value first, and then we'll see what we can do. 
about the hue. Now obviously I'm swinging this round towards purple, but there's nothing I can do about that because I have to be able to match that value. We're getting quite close here yeah, in value terms. That's about the right value, but the hue is obviously wildly wrong. What I have here is a kind of a dark magenta, which is nothing like the brown. So what can I do? The only thing I can do is add some yellow to swing the hue, right? I need to bring it round towards orange. The only thing I can do is add yellow. And it is bringing it round towards orange, but it's also bringing up the chroma. But more importantly, it's bringing up the value as well. We're still not in the orange range. So I'm going to have to swing the hue further round, which means more of this. Now we're starting to get round towards the orange red range. Because remember that this chip, which roughly corresponds to burnt umber, although a little lighter in value, actually came from the 5YR page. And this is another advantage of Munsell and thinking about things in terms of hue, value and chroma is that colour becomes easier to understand. Well, the value is lighter now. The chroma is probably about the same, slightly higher. But the hue is wrong. Let's see where we are actually in hue terms. Are we anywhere near any of these colours? We know we're slightly higher in value, so maybe we're somewhere near this one. Which is a value 3. In terms of hue, I think we're probably still way too far around towards red. Yeah, we are. The value is about right. But I would have to bring that, if I wanted to get the hue right, I've got to, the only thing I can do is put yellow in. I have to swing it round towards orange. The only way I can do that is to add yellow. It's still too red. I have to put more yellow in to bring it back round into the right hue range for brown. And by now, I'm way out of the value range. And I suspect I'm still too red. I'm probably coming up around value 4 now. See, I've gone all the way up here. I want it to be down here. I'm still too red. I need more yellow. Now this is illustrating for you. If you try to use a palette like this, it's such a restricted choice of tube paints. You have to accept that there are a bunch of colours that you cannot get. I'm slightly higher value than that even now. I'm starting to get into the right hue range. I suspect I'm probably around here. Still too red. Still too red. It's crucial to be able to get the right hue at the right value and this is the core of why I think a palette as limited as this is problematic. Because there are colours. If you want to paint realistically, if you want to get as close as you can to the colours that you see, you're going to really struggle. Now I could swing this round further. It's about the right hue now. The value is still a little bit low, but remember I was after this. And now it's way too light. The hue is about right. We're back onto, roughly onto, the 5YR page, but look at the difference in value. And if I need to bring this, the value of this colour back down here, the only thing I've got to do it with is ultramarine blue, which is going to swing the hue back round the other way again. And in fact, it's going to drop the chroma massively as well. Just for sake of argument, let's bring the value back down to where we needed it to be. You see how much this colour is changing. We're going to end up, by the time we get back down there to the value, we're going to end up with an orange green because now we mostly have blue and yellow in here and we're not there yet. So hopefully that's demonstrated fairly clearly with this 
choice of tube pigments, these three colors plus white, you cannot get anywhere near this area of orange in the color space. And that is a very important area. If you're a landscape painter or a still life painter, and in fact, a portrait painter. Now, <clears throat> I was saying earlier on that this color here, Pyrol Rubin, is one of Mark Carder's paints. Now, let me first be clear is that I have a lot of respect for Mark Carder and his teaching. Um, and he uses, in what he calls his, I think he calls it his basic palette, he adds burnt umber to this. And now you've seen why, because you cannot get down there with just those three colors. This one, you can't do. Okay, so the next area I want to look at is green. I'm gradually moving around the hue wheel, looking at the areas that I know are going to be problematic. Um, <clears throat> now, some of you, you may have come across uh, Michael Wilcox's book, Blue and Yellow Don't Make Green. Well, let's see how we can do. This is 5GY, which is um, green-yellow in Munsell terms. And the reason I picked this one is as a still life painter, I find an awful lot of stuff is at the higher chroma end. Leaves can be not generally right up here, but I'll often be mixing around here. Uh, leaves of roses are right down here. Um, so I'd want roughly to be able to, I would hope to be able to match a curve like this um, if I want to be able to paint just with these colors and match these. So let's see, we'll see, I won't go for the very highest one because it's too cruel. <laughs> let's see if we can get that and let's see if we can get this. Because if we can hit both of these, then that's a pretty good range for what we'd hope to be able to get in green. I'm just going to stick these down this time around to make this a bit easier for me to put the dabs of color on. So obviously we've got a limited palette. Our choices are limited. We're going to go with ultramarine and cadmium yellow. I'm going to have to put some more cadmium yellow out. This is getting quite expensive. <laughs> but these kind of tests, I think you should really, uh, you should really do if you can, even if you don't have the Munsell book. If you're going to think about using a limited palette and you don't want to hold yourself up, I mean, if you use the really limited colors and you find you can't hit the colors you want, it can hold you up for a very long time. Potentially years, frankly. So let's go. But first, let's see what we, where we are in, in value terms. I would say value is just dark to light. This is slightly lower value than here. This is probably about a value 1.5, something like that, slightly lower than this. So we've got a little bit of leeway there. So we can bring in a little bit of yellow, swing the hue round towards green. That's still a very blue green. And I need more to bring it round to the right hue. Still a very blue-green, but already we've reached this value. We're higher than that value already, but we're, we've got a blue-green. I need a more yellow-green. Not that much in nature is blue-green. An awful lot is yellow-green. Okay, let's see where we are now in the color space. If I get the book, the page from the Munsell book back. I think we're still potentially not all the way around here. It's still a little bit blue. In value terms, I think we're probably, value and chroma terms, we're probably about here. Maybe slightly higher, higher chroma. We're probably about here at the moment. 
little bit lower in value, lower in chroma, not that one. And we're definitely still too blue-green. I'm going to put a little bit more yellow in because the hue is still too blue. We're not on this page in terms of hue yet. Let's see where we are now. And remember, the only way that I can lower this value is to add ultramarine. We're not too far off that one, but the chroma is lower. That's much closer. So we're actually here. We're about value four. And we're at chroma six. But what we were actually after was a value two, was a very low value. And we couldn't get there because by the time we got to the right hue area, the value had come all the way up to here. So we can't get a low value green, a low value yellow green. You cannot do it with these paints. If you go low value, what you will end up with is a blue green. Okay, so let's see now if we can get anywhere near to this slightly higher chroma mid value green. Uh, we'll use the same paints because our only choice here is ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow. I'm going to want more yellow this time because I need to be a fairly high value range. Now this obviously, although the value is probably about right, the hue is much too far around the hue wheel towards yellow. This is too yellow a green. Yep, the value is about right. The chroma is lower, but the hue is entirely wrong. So I need to bring the hue back. And the only way I can do that, bring it back around towards a blue green, is by adding blue. And of course that's going to bring down the value as well, but it can't be helped. Um, I can't get there with just blue and yellow. Too much yellow brings the value up, right? The chroma is still nowhere near, really. But the hue is entirely wrong. And this is all about being able to reach a reasonable chroma at the right value, at the right hue. To see the range that we can get. Now this, I think, is probably... A little bit too yellow still, but we brought it back round further. It's going to be darker now, a lot darker, and it's also much lower chroma. Let's have a quick look at the page again for this mid yellow green and see what we might be close to. Well, it looks like we're around here possibly around here at the moment, which is obviously a lower value than we were trying to get to. We were trying to get here, and it's also lower in chroma. So let's dab a little on here. Now it's lower value still, but it's still too yellow. I'm going to have to put more blue in to bring the hue round. And this is, remember, this is quite a yellowish green that I'm trying to achieve here. Let's bring the book back. I suspect that we're probably moving down around here now. Yeah. The hue is probably about in the right area. So we're between these two. But I was trying to get here. Now... The hue is now something like right. The chroma is lower than we were trying to get to. My only other option to bring the value of this up, I can't add more yellow because I'll just end up where I was before with too yellow a hue. So all I can do is add white if I want to bring the value back to where it should be. If I want to lighten the value of something, it, I, the only way I can do it is with a lighter color. A lighter tube paint. I've only got yellow or white. 
Where am I in value? Still darker than what I was aiming for. And remember, I didn't even choose the highest chroma green. I chose a step down, knowing that this would be difficult. Uh, the value is about right now. But let's wipe this off so you can clearly see what's happened here. And put some more on there. The value is about right, but it's a lot lower chroma. Let's see where we actually are. Remember, we're here. I suspect that we're probably about here in chroma terms. Yeah, that's probably about it. So although we were trying to get up here, this color, we've ended up with the highest we can get to is around here. It's not too bad, but for a lot of stuff that you find in nature, you know, apples, slightly higher chroma, but it's also the value is low as well. Apples, no, you won't be able to do it. Green apple, no. Pear, you might conceivably manage. And for landscape painters, I don't actually paint landscape at the moment. I have done in the past, but not recently. So if any landscape painters are watching this, reading this blog post, they can tell me how important it is to be able to mix reasonably high chroma greens. But we really struggled there to get anywhere near either a low value yellow green or a reasonable chroma at a middle value yellow green. We just couldn't do it. So that was pretty interesting. I think you'll agree. Um, even I was surprised by how limited um, some of the colors that we ended up with were when we were trying to reach the higher chromas. Um, so just to kind of recap that quickly, uh, if you're using a, a limited primary palette of only three colors plus white, um, a lot of this area of the color space is unavailable to you. Pretty much everything underneath my hand there, you're not going to be able to get. And everything to the right of my hand, you're not going to be able to get. You can mix at this hue, which is a fairly useful hue to be able to mix a mid yellow green. All of that that I've covered with my hand, you can get everything else you can see. You're pretty much not going to be able to reach. You're going to need to add something. So what would you add? Well, a good choice might be say um, a fallow green um, because you could it's high chroma at very low value especially if you had something like a Windsor and Newton yellow shade Windsor green um, because with the addition of some yellow that would bring it round to um, more yellow but it would also raise the value if you and, and if you wanted to get down here you would have to add another color again Something like, you could un add something like um, Windsor & Newton sap green, which would allow you to get down to that part of the color space. Um, but green's very limited. One thing that I didn't cover then was the blues. And the reason I didn't is because actually this palette doesn't do too badly on what you might call the middle blue. Um, so you can get up to around here with just um, ultramarine and white. Um, everything below there you can reach reasonably easily with ultramarine and everything above. So there's just a little bit here, that over here, over this side, that you wouldn't be able to get. The bit that you can see there, you would, you would struggle to reach. It's not often you're going to want those colours over there. Um, but when you do, you could add cobalt or, you know, something like that. But you would need to add something else. The scariest part of the colour space in relation to this palette is this here, is the oranges. Because so much of the world falls somewhere on this page, in this hue area, or cl very close to it. Um, you can basically uh, forget about everything below my hand there. You can't get any of those colors with this palette. So what would you add? Probably the best choice would be burnt umber. Um, a lot of people say you shouldn't use burnt umber because it sinks in and all that stuff. I'm not talking about paint handling at all in this video. All I'm talking about is what colors you can reach with the tube paint that you have. Um, and obviously up here, you wouldn't be able to reach the very top end of the chroma either. Um, 
So hopefully that's given you some idea. Now, the main thing I guess that I want you to take away from this video, and the reason that I've done this, um, is that I don't, well, I hate to think of people struggling with color mixing because it doesn't have to be that hard. And one of the things that I think people do and the stock advice that people often give if you're struggling with color is to reduce the amount of tube paints that you have um, because you'll have less problems to deal with. It will simplify it. You can learn those colors well, learn those tube paints well, and then add some more once you have. And it would seem like good advice, except that I think you'll often find yourself sitting at the easel, straining to reach colors that you cannot reach with the tube paints that you have. You'll get very frustrated and ultimately I'm worried that it will hold you back. So at the very least, do a test like this with the paints that you have. If you're going to choose a limited palette, learn at least what you can reach with them and what you can't, and you'll be in a much better position to paint.